An update to the breaking news we told you first about at five. Multiple migrants have been rescued from inside of a train car along US Highway 90 east of Canipa. Right now, the highway is closed so medical helicopters can land. We actually are hearing from the Uvalde newspaper, the news leader, that 12 migrants were found in a train car. Two of them are dead. Again, that's according to the Uvalde newspaper. Uvalde's mayor has been in touch with us, Don McLaughlin. He tells us that ambulances from around the area are assisting uh, those people. We also, as we said, have medical helicopters that have landed on Highway 90, which is why Highway 90 had to be shut down. He also tells us that authorities got that 911 call for this emergency from somebody who was inside the train car. We do have a crew headed that way. Our John Paul Barajas is nearly there. We're going to keep you up to date on our air throughout this newscast and on KSAT.com. See something, say something. Not just a motto. Yesterday, it could have been a lifesaver at Roosevelt Elementary when a parent saw a man with a rifle bag standing near her kid's school. We now know that man was indeed a threat and was under the influence of drugs with a loaded gun. Camilia Juarez with how a parent's quick thinking likely saved the day. Just before school was about to let out at Roosevelt Elementary on the city's west side, a woman told police she saw a man standing outside the back of a school with a rifle bag. So the call came in at 239. By 240, our officers were on scene. And by uh, 241, uh, the suspect was, was in custody. Edgewood ISD officers arrested Michael Lozano, a convicted felon who police say was under the influence of meth. Inside the bag was a 12-gauge shotgun, extra ammunition, and a small amount of meth. He was here because he was a, a, a savior to people, and, and sometimes saviors needed to do a, a radical, uh, take radical action. Edgewood ISD Police Chief Jesse Queiroga says it takes a village to keep students safe. That's why it's important that if you see something, say something. Instead of just minding her own business or waiting for kids, she reacted. She reacted. She is a true hero. Quiroga says the school wasn't put on lockdown because Lozano was quickly taken into custody. But when these situations arise, there are multiple response fronts. We send a team to go address whatever threat there is, and we send a team to go uh, secure the campus. This, this works simultaneously. Lozano is facing multiple charges. Some include unlawful possession of a firearm, places weapons prohibited, and possession of a controlled substance in a drug-free zone. Lozano is currently in custody and off the streets. Camelia Juarez, Case at 12 News. Investigators want you to keep an eye out, but not approach two men with a long list of felony crimes. Records show Baltimore Carlos is currently wanted on two felony warrants, one for aggravated sexual assault of a child and another for evading arrest with a vehicle. The second man on your right is Rogelio Delgado. He is wanted by law enforcement for two charges, fraudulently using or possessing IDs, tampering with government records, unlawful carry of a weapon, and possession of a controlled substance with intent to deliver. If you have any information on these two men's whereabouts, you can call SAPD at 210-207-7273. But police do ask that you not contact or try to apprehend these suspects yourself. A man wanted for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon dead after a confrontation with U.S. Marshals at a downtown hotel. This all happened about noon in the 500 block of West Cesar Chavez near UTSA's downtown campus. It's the Doubletree Hotel there. Law enforcement says Marshals got a tip that the 46 year old man was at that hotel. When officers encountered the suspect, he was shot and killed on the third story of the hotel's parking garage. A firearm found at the scene. No other details about what led up to the shooting have been released. The identity of the man killed has also not been released. A burglary at a smoke shop leaving a trail of stolen vape pins and smoking accessories all over Broadway. The break in happened sometime around 530 this morning at Five Star Smoke Shop on Broadway Street. SAPD says three people broke into the shop by smashing the front window of the front door. One officer saw the men running away before they jumped into a car to drive off. The suspects drove into the ground, rather onto the grounds of the Botanical Gardens and then crashed their vehicle. Police say though they left behind the vehicle and some of their stolen items, no arrests though have been made.
A major distributor of food products in our area shuts down its systems and operations after they say they detected unusual activity on their networks. Some local businesses, meanwhile, have had to shut down themselves. Our Jonathan Cotto reports some restaurants are shutting down because they don't have food right now. I just don't like to see people leave without their their meal they were coming to get. Amado de la Torre, owner of Chicago Dogs on the city's north side, forced to close its doors for not having the food item they're most known for, hot dogs. Its food distributor, Benny Keith, unable to make food deliveries. That started on the 15th. Uh, we tried to get an order that day, and we call them up and they say, no, you can't get nothing. We have a problem and call tomorrow. Tomorrow came and nothing. So we end up closing half the day because we ran out of hot dogs. Benny Keith shut down its systems and operations after stating they suspected unusual activity on their networks. The shutdown causing their food distributions to go undelivered. It, it seems like there's not a lot of money. We lost about five to six hundred bucks for the sales. But, you know, for small guys like us, it means a lot. We need that revenue to, to keep paying the bills. We reached out to Benny Keith to learn in detail the status of their systems shut down. In a statement, they say, quote, we have made considerable progress restoring our systems and operations and are making deliveries to most of our customers. Our team will continue to work 24-7 until our systems and ops are operating at full capacity, end quote. We ask the people to uh, understand the little change, you know, and still support us throughout this. Uh, I'm hoping by Monday or Tuesday, everything will go back to normal with, with, with Benny Keith. Jonathan Cotto, Keysat 12 News. I want to give you an update right now on that discovery made in a train car near Canipa. We understand Two people, this is according to the Uvalde Herald leader, two people, news leader rather, their newspaper in Uvalde, two people have been found dead, migrants in this train car, as many as 12 were found inside. We are joined now by the police chief from Uvalde, Daniel Rodriguez. Uh, chief, thank you for joining us. Uh, what's the latest on what's happening in Canipa? Hi, good evening. Uh, so at approximately 3:50 p.m., uh, our dispatch center received a a call uh, from a non-work a 911 call from a non-working number, which we uh, we don't know if it was someone from inside the train cart or or where that call came from. But that's kind of what we're assuming at this point. So uh, that there were several undocumented aliens that were trapped inside the train cart, and so uh, Border Patrol got the information from us. And immediately the train uh, stopped about two to three miles east of Kinipa, which is their regular stopping point for a train check for Border Patrol. Uh, upon Border Patrol searching the area or the train carts, uh, they did discover 12 undocumented aliens, uh, two of which were already deceased, unfortunately. Uh, so uh, there were several undocumented aliens that were in immediate need of uh, medical treatment. Uh, several, uh, approximately five to six medic choppers have been, were called. Uh, several ambulances made the scene. And uh, so there, there have been already several uh, patients that have been flown and uh, transported to hospitals uh, nearby, either in Uvalde or San Antonio. The chief, this is Ursula Perry. Um, what kind of condition were these survivors in? Were they dehydrated? Were they overheated? I personally uh, have not received that information, but I mean, with, you know, with the, it's starting to get a little warm inside a train cart. There's no telling what temperatures those train carts get. You know, I know it's, it was in the 80s, maybe low 90s today, but uh, th they can get really hot really fast. So I'm sure it was dehydration, no telling how long uh, these undocumented aliens have been walking or traveling. Uh, so that, that's a very good possibility. Your chief, uh, you, you, I mean, you're from a nearby border community there. You've, you've had interactions uh, with migrants and the coyotes that take them. Does, does, does this point out again kind of the heartless nature, the business-like nature for a lot of these, uh, you know, a lot of them backed by cartels in Mexico. Is it, did this kind of point that out again? 
Yes, this this I mean this just confirms everything that's happening, you know, in this in this area. It's just uh it's sad to see that, you know, so many undocumented immigrants were, were found in this condition and unfortunately two lost their lives and it's just it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. I was reading on the internet just trying to do a, a search on news and realized that even just a month and a half ago in uh, Laredo, there was a similar situation trapped inside the rail car because I think a lot of immigrants are so desperate to get here, they don't realize that once you're in that car without a ladder or some means of escape, you really are trapped. Yes, that is correct. And uh, it's just a sad situation here and it's unfortunate and, and you know, I. I my, our prayers are, are with these individuals. Chief Daniel Rodriguez from the Uvalde Police Department. Chief, really appreciate your time and giving us an update and some perspective on this whole thing. Appreciate yeah. it. No problem. Thank you. You. You take care. Thanks again to Chief Daniel Rodriguez from Uvalde. Well, we're about a half, about a month and a half away from the May municipal elections. Things like city council seats and mayor will be on the ballot. Right now on KSAT.com, we have a sample ballot you can look at to see what you'll be voting for. To see the sample ballot and see more of the election stories ahead of election night, just scan this QR code on your screen. And one of the things on that ballot will be Proposition A. A lot is included in there, including decriminalizing marijuana and abortion in San Antonio. But another aspect has caught the eye of the business community. Garrett Berger tells us why an expansion of the site and release option for theft charges has taken center stage. See, they are repainted. We have repainted this area. Like any store owner, Mohamed Rana hates graffiti and has little patience for those who tag his business or anyone else's. They need to be punished, so they won't do it. While the city of San Antonio already has a site and release program, it doesn't currently include graffiti. It does, however, cover other misdemeanors, like thefts between 100 and 750 bucks. Prop A would add graffiti to the program, and more importantly, largely require citations instead of arrests, whereas SAPD officers currently have some leeway. If this goes into play, there is no officer discretion. We lose that. Store owners like Rana think that if you're walking out of the store with their stuff, you shouldn't be walking away from an arrest. There's no physical arrest or something. Just it's a slap on the your wrist. Don't do it. That's it. The head of the group that led the campaign to get the proposition on the ballot says they want to promote citations as a, quote, compassionate and holistic way to address crime prevention and reduce the burden on the criminal justice system. And cited or not, the DA's office still has a choice whether to charge someone. We are giving folks an opportunity to essentially learn their lesson and get that chance without having something on their record that will affect their housing, their jobs in the future, staying with their families. In the meantime, the city attorney has said most of Prop A is unenforceable, so it's not totally clear what would happen even if it does pass. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Live cam outside, what a beautiful day it has been, and I'm hoping it's gonna wipe away a lot of the humidity that we've been seeing out there, Mia. Yes, it already has, which good. is the good news. Yes, it is warm out there heading into any of those Friday evening plans, but we do have the dry air in place, which makes it very comfortable to step out to. Temperatures right now, we're in the 80s for most. A few low 90s across our far southern counties into this weekend. Tomorrow, an absolute beauty of a day. A cooler morning, plenty of sunshine, highs in the low 80s, low humidity, but that's going to change into the early portions of next week. We also have day chances to find some isolated rain out there. We're going to time out that weekend forecast and get you all the details coming up in just a few. All right, thank you, Mia. I want to take you to a traffic situation right now. This is 90 at Nagalitos, and what you're seeing is a couple of cars, actually a few cars that are pulled off to the side. There's also a San Antonio police officer out there, and there's actually, if you look right in the middle lane, there's a pickup truck and what looks like a car that's facing the opposite direction. So it looks like it may be a chain reaction accident out here. It's US 90 at Nogalitos. Traffic's doing the best it can, but right now it looks like only one lane is open, but this is the height of rush hour and it is quite a mess out there. We'll be right back. 
We are enjoying a major change <laughs> from what we've had all week long. Sun came out nice and early today and things warmed up and now it's all drying out. Yes, it's just comfortable. Earlier yeah. this week we had plenty of humidity. That's why we had the morning drizzle, the morning fog. You could just feel the stickiness whenever you did step outside. Today, a whole different story after that front moved through. It still was a little muggy out there first thing this morning. But what that front has done is, yes, pushed in a lot of that drier air into South Central Texas, which is going to make for a beautiful weekend, especially tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine at the blue skies in the forecast. Temperature wise, this weekend's going to feature some cooler mornings. We're talking lows in the low 50s here in San Antonio, followed by highs in the low 80s. But of course, with those lower dew points, it's going to feel a whole lot more comfortable out there. Enjoy it on Saturday. It will be still a nice start to the day on Sunday. Day, but throughout the back half of the weekend, that's when we're going to start to see a touch more of that moisture filter back into the area. And that combined with our next front moving in early next week does look to spark isolated daily chances for some rain here in South Central Texas. So we'll time it all out. Let's start with a look at those current conditions again. Beautiful blue skies. This is 281 looking back over towards the airport. 88 degrees right now, a dew point of 30. So there's that drier air that's already in place place. Those lower humidity values have been pushed in via a breezy northwest wind though today. Generally still finding some wind gusts upwards of 25 to even 30 miles per hour in spots. Currently this 6 p.m. hour seeing just that over in Hondo stretching up to the Lost Maples area. 25 mile per hour wind gusts currently reported over in Kerrville up in the hill country. So if you're stepping out for any Friday evening plans likely will be a little breezy out there in spots as well, but clear skies are forecasted to stick with us and temperatures will be able to cool off pretty efficiently, especially after the sun goes down. We're in the mid 70s by 9 p.m. transitioning to the upper 60s as we head into the 11 p.m. hour tomorrow morning. Low 50s expected clear skies. That's going to be the theme into the first half of the weekend's plans. Mid 70s already by lunchtime and then as we head into the afternoon hours, low 80s expected here in San Antonio, maybe a little bit warmer the farther south and west you go kind of like what we saw out there today. Again, 82 over in Converse, 84 in Floresville, 84 is that forecast high in Pleasanton out there in Atascosa County, 82 in Hondo, and 82 as well, stretching over to Utopia. Then we head into the back half of the weekend. Still a cool start in the low 50s, but we'll start to see more humidity work back in as those winds shift in from the south. So what that's going to do for us, maybe a little bit more cloud cover starting to work back into the south central Texas sky on Sunday and sure, maybe a stray shower, not completely out of the question, especially east of I-35 for the back half of the weekend. Coverage is expected to be very low there. Into Monday, you can see what that humidity is going to do to our morning low, closer to 60. Highs topping off in the upper 70s, near about 80. That's what it's looking like right now. We see that next cool front move in throughout the day. An isolated chance to find a few showers to a stray rumble, certainly possible. And then check out those temperatures into Tuesday. A little bit cooler into the afternoon hours. We're topping off in the low 70s, so we'll monitor the radar each day next week. Again, as that boundary moves through as early as Monday, a few showers to a stray thunderstorm certainly possible. We'll copy and paste those conditions throughout next week as well. Temperatures in the upper 50s in the mornings, transitioning to the low 70s through Wednesday, and then we'll start to warm things back up by the second half of next week, guys. Looks very pleasant. Hope we get some rain. Thanks, yes. Mia. All right, it is spring football time, and that is certainly true across the area and in San Marcos. Yes, Texas State football starting their first spring practice under new head coach out there, G.J. Kinney. The Bobcats are very excited and Coach Kinney is very excited to get started with the Bobcats. Plus, in the UIL soccer playoffs, the Southwest boys and girls teams are off to a fantastic start coming up. The Spurs and Wizards have tipped off at Capital One Arena in Washington, D.C. And Jeremy Sohan will not play due to what the team is calling right knee soreness injury management. Zach Collins is also out with a right biceps contusion. And Devin Vassell will sit due to left knee injury management. Devontae Graham, Keldon Johnson, Trey Jones, and Doug McDermott are all listed as available as they deal with some minor injuries. So here is your score. The Wizards lead 17-16 to in the first. We'll have highlights and postgame on the night beat. Turning to March Madness, members of the Florida Atlantic.
Sonic Owls jumped on the scorers table. Madison Square Garden to celebrate their biggest win in program history last night, knocking off the Tennessee Volunteers. The Owls took control of the game in the final 10 minutes behind Michael Forrest and Janelle Davis, who combined for 26 points. Number nine in the East Region, Florida Atlantic upsets number four Tennessee 62-55. And they'll next play Kansas State, looking to advance to their first Final Four. And it will be their first ever matchup with K-State. The Texas State Bobcats started spring football yesterday, their first under head coach G.J. Kinney and his staff. Texas State will hold 15 practices over five weeks at Bobcat Stadium. This week, they'll go Thursday and Saturday, followed by three consecutive weeks of Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Kinney was hired back on December the 2nd following an awesome season and incarnate word, leading them to the nation's number one scoring offense and reaching the FCS playoffs semifinals for the first time in UIW history. Now his coaching talents reside in San Marcos, with the Bobcats. I think just learning how to practice. I think that was big. Hustling on and off the field. Uh, once, you, once you catch the ball, getting two lines. Um, defensive line, you know, getting lined up. Just because you make a sack, hey, the next play you better get going because we're, we're going fast on offense. So that's something that, you know, we got to, you know, continue to work on something we've harped and, and, and preached all offseason, uh, especially on our offense and defense as well. The, the tempo, getting lined up, getting the call. Uh, I thought they did a really good job of that. Kenny is the 21st head football coach in program history. Last night, Southwest High School saw both their boys and girls soccer teams win their Class 5A by district playoff games on their home field, and that's become the norm in recent years. The girls punched their tickets to the second round for the fourth straight playoffs with a dominant 9-0 victory versus Edison. They haven't lost a game since January, and they're not taking a win like this for granted. It means everything. Like, some people say it's just a game, but to these girls, it's not. You know, soccer is more than just soccer. We get taught not just, you know, passing a ball. We get taught self-sacrifice, you know, self-discipline. Like, it's a lot for us. This is everything, and we deserve it. The Dragons will next face Canyon in the area around early next week. The boys followed the girls on the pitch and used a strong start to knock off Jefferson 5-0 in their Class 5A by district contest. Southwest scored, scored all five of their goals in the first half. The Dragons are 22-1 this season and have advanced to the regional semis in two of their last four years. So how does Thursday's win set the tone for them moving forward? From August, you know, we've been talking about making a deep playoff run. We we know the first round game and the next one's probably even a little bit more tougher. So if, if we can, you know, get by that one, you know, we're, we're excited about what, what it shapes out for us. After the game, the Dragons held head coach Romero down to make sure he got the Gatorade bath. I love that. <laughs> you know what I say about the Southwest teams, Larry? I know what you say, but they're, I'm going to let you say it. They're breathing. Fire. Yeah. So I want you to say it. <laughs> Breathing. When I said that Thanks for letting me play. Because the dragons, you know, when I did that yesterday, Larry just went. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's exactly what Larry did. All right, we'll have an update <laughs> on the migrants found in the back of that train and much more when we come back. All right, on Fridays, we like to give you a look at what's happening in our community that's maybe not as mainstream as, you know, what's happening at certain theme parks around town. And to help us in this journey, Stephanie Guerra also known as Puro P. Yes. Her, her web, website is Puro P rhymes with Flinch A. We can't say yeah. it on TV. But I, think, I like Puro P because that could be your rap name too. Yeah, it is. <laughs> See, there you okay. go. Very right. nice. And you just I exposed love the, me. I know, sorry. <laughs> I love, you sent us a, a little list in advance and the one that caught my eye immediately because I have great visions of this while on vacation. I'm sure tourists are going to love this. Tell us about the sidecars. So San Antonio Sidecars is a local um, minority owned business. They're having their official launch party tomorrow at Legacy Park downtown. Um, my husband and I Look actually, um, that ah. was our exit from our wedding. Um, we got married downtown in Hemisphere Park and they were our exit. So normally you can't drive them. They let my husband do that for our special occasion, but they're um, Kevin, owned by Kevin and Liz and they give amazing tours through downtown and they also will take you to some of like 
taco spots and the best watering holes and they're actually going to kick everything off with a huge party. They got their permits to run in downtown San Antonio. So tourists, locals, everybody can do that and they're gonna have a lot of fun tomorrow with pizza, gelato, free sidecar rides. Legacy Ooh. Park. Yes, it's nice. gonna be a lot of fun. I'm already envisioning Ursula with like sunglasses and a scarf on, yes. like going Very through European. Alamo Plaza. Zooming yeah. past the, the hair yeah. flowing the in the wind. Yeah. Sure. It's gonna be beautiful, you need to do it. All right, <laughs> we're gonna talk about some famous brothers. Is that who, the, yeah, brothers yes. that are performing. Our famous. So tomorrow, Saturday night, Ready Revolution is having an album release party. I hope I got that right, at 502 Bar up on the city northeast side. And two of the members are Diego and Emilio Navaida. You yes. may recognize the name of, course. of their late great father. Um, so they're back in town. They are also in this big band called Las Bandoleros. Um, they're normally on tour with Sting, but they're here in town this weekend and they're playing a show with their other local friends, Passenger, and it's gonna be a great night of local rock music. You definitely should go support them. They're great guys and they always try to show San Antonio love everywhere they go. That answered my question. It's not Tejano <laughs> music, it's rock music. Yes, it's rock. Okay, it is good. rock. All right, now this is something that my daughter would love to be participating in. Uh, 45 August Studios opening up for a tour. Yeah, so it's the annual On and Off Red Road Tour. Um, I don't know how many years they've been doing this, but I know it's been decades. Um, so if you go up and down Fredericksburg Road on any day, you'll see art galleries, you'll see local shops, restaurants, but on tomorrow and Sunday and then the following weekend, they actually all open up their studios so you can stroll in and out of them and take a tour of all the amazing local art artisans. There's jewelry, there's galleries, there's um, restaurants, there's clothing studios, and it's a really, really fun experience and it's free. Very and we're calling nice. it Fred Road. Yes. The Fred yeah. Road Tour. And <laughs> Ursula could do it in her best beside car. There you go. Okay, so yeah. then this weekend's really shaping yeah. up now. It's gonna right. be a great weekend for being outdoors doors, enjoying of all of the local stuff San Antonio has. All right, so she's known as a poet, but I personally know this woman can sing. Oh, yeah. I mean, she is a talented singer. I've seen her at a couple of different things. I don't know what she can't do. Yeah. Um, so Andrea Vocab, I, I go, I know her as Vocab. I'm sure a lot of San Antonio does now too. She's our most recent poet laureate. Um, they, She's performing on Sunday night with the Foreign Arm and George Garza Trio at the Echo Bridge. So I'm not sure if we ever talked about the Echo Bridge before, but down south off of Roosevelt Road on the river, there's a huge part of the river walk with a bridge that is having concerts with the Echo Bridge Appreciation Society. So the musicians are on one side of the river and all of the fans are on the other. And it's this beautiful display of performing arts, music. They have lights normally. Um, it's a really, really neat event, something that you don't see anywhere else in the city. I've heard of the Echo Bridge Bridge concerts. Yes. I've never actually been to one. Well, I had no vocab. idea. This is this you is a great idea. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh. So they've been having a music series. They're hopefully continue for a long time. The ticket price ensures that we support them and that they can keep doing these shows with local and touring artists. All right, uh, and, a, and a notable woman, which is important because it is Women's History Month, yes. and there is a way in which you can spend some time really getting to know yes. some important women. So. I'm glad we're almost at the end of it, but the, you should still celebrate it every day, right? Yes. Of course. Ursula, you're an amazing woman. We celebrate you here you in San too. Antonio. Um, there is the Watcha Women's Film Series. So a lot of people use the slang term Watcha Le, you know, like check something out. Um, at Jaime's Place, it's coming back to Jaime's Place on Thursday, March 30th, to celebrate Women's History Month with Latina Spring. So this is going to be a curated showcase of short films and um, different video documentaries that are all created by Latinas, by women filmmakers from South Texas, and they've all been created within the last two, three years, so they're recent films. Um, it's a great way to support women filmmakers. I know San Antonio, with the Film Commission, you know, tries to help us a lot. Go see it in the heart of the West Side. We have talked about Jaime's Place before. Yes. We all need to get out there. Yes right on the near west side, but it's gonna be an amazing film series and that they bring out throughout the year also. Not enough attention is yes. placed on these very important filmmakers. Yes, we need, and we need to give them money. So yeah. get out there and support. I just feel <laughs> lucky that I'm surrounded by talented women, including on this set Thank right you. now. The entire studio. <laughs> yeah. Mia's here true. as well. I know, Mia. 
I could go on and on, but we only have a few minutes left in this news. So many amazing women, and thank you for always supporting us. Aww. It's Stephanie, always got a it's house It's always full a of pleasure. Them. Yeah, <laughs> it's always a pleasure to have you on Fridays. A lot of stuff to do. I'm glad to be here. All right. Cheryl P., check out our new rap album coming out soon. Thank we'll, you. we'll be right back.